how this is going to be the community that is going to you know, redo everything. Um, I think it's more advisory to bring a lot of disparate pieces that belong in you know, financing and construction and engineering and bidding and kind of come together and kind of become a clearinghouse. Um, so I think that to try to lend a little uh, information as to what that advisory committee is. Um, they've met once for two hours and it was in September and they have to schedule a meeting. So I think that to put a lot of emphasis on the committee and somehow this is going to be you know, a super committee that's going to line everything is um, inaccurate. Some comparisons were drawn between what's taking place in Reading and, and North Reading. How comparable are these? Uh, um, I think in Reading High School, um, and I'm not a, a history, but it seems to me it's a much newer building than the Bachelor School. It was probably the <coughs> newest piece of the Bachelor School was probably uh, older than the newest part of the, or the oldest part of the um, high school. I don't think that they have uh, as much of a serious space problem within the high school area as it is a qualitative and maybe a space layout problem. Um, I also think that in terms of the site issues, uh, there is a little more flexibility on the site um, space-wise uh, than the basketball school. So additionally, they're talking about also building another elementary school. Yeah, they, they have a uh, project on, yeah, it's, uh, on uh, Dividends Road, Sun Rock uh, Lane, um, and going through a bit of an issue. One of the things they're running into um, is uh, a variety of litigation uh, down there that has uh, drawn out the process. Um, I actually, specific, when I met with uh, the Reading School Building Committee, um, and I met with uh, Jeff, it was one of the specific conditions we don't talk about new elementary school in Reading because there is litigation pending. Uh, inversely, everybody, uh, with the fortunate exception of myself, has been deposed uh, <laughs> about who said what, when, and why, and how. Uh, the superintendent was yeah, I just wanted to point out, you know, some analogies are being drawn in relation to the situation that we're in, the situation they're in, the levels of reimbursement, and what's happening down there, and how wonderful it is, and this is terrific there, and why, why can't we benefit the same way? And again, to, to me, it was being maybe a little better informed than some of the other people, uh, it, it seems to be uh, two totally different situations, and uh, we really can't. It's, it's apples to oranges. Right. right. And I mean, the base, the base rate, absolutely. Uh, you know, Reading, uh, our affluence, uh, despite historical rivalries, I think between Reading and North Reading, our affluence has surpassed the level of that affluence. They don't know that yet, though. Do they? Um, yeah, they see the rate. Yeah. But in this instance, it can place them up as a higher, a higher base rate. They're at 55, over 55 percent. Um, and doing the high school renovation, they started out at uh, with a five percent point. They're already over 60 percent. Um, so if they use a construction manager, um, they are at 62 plus percent. Uh, and if they have just good maintenance, they're at 66 plus percent. If they added innovative community use. Um, or they have excellent maintenance, they can easily get over to 69, 69 and a half, 70, 72%. So, uh, obviously, Reading had cause to celebrate the, uh, the new regulations potentially. Um, and they declined it out. But, but, <laughs> well, yeah. but, I, you know, in terms of the basketball school, I guess I drew the analogy to somebody, it's sort of like having a, an old car Decide we need to do something about your transportation. You take the car to the garage, and the gentleman says, I can fix it. A couple weeks later, there's a new piece of equipment in, and it's reasonable to ask if with the new equipment you can fix my car. And in some instances, maybe you could. Um, but in some instances, the new equipment still isn't going to fix the car. Well, I think the Bassett School is that car. Um, and perhaps on certain projects in certain parts of the state that maybe were a real close call, Maybe uh, it would be viewed a little different. But I think, in my understanding, in a school that um, didn't come close to being an improvement project, uh, that this doesn't, the new regulations, despite a new philosophy and, and an attempt to be a, a different approach, maybe to emphasize renovation a little bit more, um, didn't still make the threshold. Okay, we, we also have, but just to spread of information, we've seen letters to the editor come in from. Uh, a uh, non-profit uh, lobbying group uh, who 
and that are advocating the uh, restoration and saving of older schools and historical schools and buildings and things of that nature. And I actually met with them last year when this whole thing first came up. And uh, you know they had certain information from certain people within the community. I gave them some more information. I haven't met with them since, but this was over a year ago. And uh, but again, we, we have a letter to the editor that we've seen the last week or two. I think it's important for people to know that, again, they are a, a lobbying group, a nonprofit lobbying group with a very well-intended lobbying group uh, in order to uh, facilitate the uh, preservation of the old schools. Uh, and again, it has to be, again, they said, you know, they'll, they'll go to the wall for us and so on and so forth, but it still doesn't secure the funding for us and it just further, further delays the project. And I think it's important to know that, you know, it's not as though you haven't been talking, in my opinion, you haven't been talking to the right people and you, and you didn't know who to go to. And uh, I just think it's important to point out that, again, while they're well-intended, and again, they're looking for allies, um, that at some point they have to recognize there are just certain projects that the state is not going to spend their good hard-earned dollars, our good hard-earned tax dollars on something which isn't economically feasible when we have a more viable alternative which is going to be more effective to meet the educational needs of our community. I think it comes down to everybody trying to be well-intentioned, but where you put the emphasis. And it seems to me that what Trump and advocates in the town are trying to solve is the qualitative and quantitative space problem for students. The emphasis isn't how can we uh, maintain or restore a historical building. And I think for other advocates, it's how can we maintain and renovate a historical building with your great use of it being still as an elementary school. Right, that's the thing. That, that has not been right. done in a vacuum here. Pump has right. taken that as, as, a, uh, as a primary concern and goal of ours is right. to retain, after we've evaluated the cost and the, you know, whether we even looked at, you know, selling it, leasing it out, uh, doing a car, get housing and, and uh, affordable right. housing and all the rest. It just wasn't economically feasible, but again, the, the consensus was the need to retain that. And, and, and I think Pump's so long term plan is it, it would be kept as a town building um, and probably be stored in some form or fashion to its historical uh, way. Well, well, the, the, purpose, thing, the purpose in a lot of the oh. national, the National Trust, for example, being the national organization, and I'm assuming the Massachusetts-based one, is to save the building. And I think this is more along the lines of they're concerned about what happened when, for example, we, did, we moved the library from the tavern to the current Flint Memorial Hall and didn't have a plan for several years and almost lost the building. And I think that's part of what got us in trouble in previous plans for a school. But it's very clear in the plan that we've got now that we have a proposal for the building, saves the integrity of the building, saves the look and structure of the building, which is in general what most historic groups are looking to do. Another, another issue with, with uh, Historic Massachusetts and some in the letter that was in the transcript and, and some of the previous writings um, address school buildings historic buildings, older buildings in Chelsea, Fairhaven, um, I forget what some of Salem, the Salem, Worcester, Milford, Worcester. Um, these are urban communities. And I think that part of what the um, Department of Education and the legislature are trying to address in the new school construction um, legislation and regulations is not to tear down some of the buildings in these urban communities, which has been happening. Of the, the building is overcrowded, the building is, is programmatically inadequate, and the building is completely raised, and something new goes up, and or parklands and, and um, open spaces. Of, we're not going to build a new school in Ipswich River Park to save the batch as, as a building. But in these urban communities, um, that's what has, has happened in the past. And some of these buildings should be saved. Um, and monies may be better spent. But that is just not the case in not growing it. It's not the case with the batch. There is no intent to raise the building, demolish it, or otherwise destroy a historic building. Um, but our Educational needs cannot be met in that site. 
one of the things that I think we need to address, but Brad, if you have a few minutes to stick around with us, I'd appreciate it. This is the last event. This is the last event. I think, you know, again, one of the other key issues, uh, again, in, er in everybody's mind is, you know, what is this going to cost us? You know, what, what's the, the tax implications of, you know, if I have a home that's assessed for 200 or 300,000 dollars, you know, what's the impact of my vote, you know, come this November, and on the overall plan? We have, uh, you know, Mark Sturdivant uh, from the Finance Committee, in conjunction with that, after he completes that, if you could just talk and uh, touch on the, uh, the circuit breaker mm -hmm. bill, because you know I, I think you know there's been some information disseminated, you know, from the uh, uh, group of uh, individuals out there who, who are not in favor of this particular proposal, uh, which I found particularly alarming because it really does uh, raise the fear unnecessarily of a lot of uh, <coughs> senior citizens on fixed incomes as to what the exact effect of this is going to be. But I think the circuit breaker bill. Again, it's something which is, assists people in addressing those personal concerns that they may have. But uh, before we address that, if we could just talk about, uh, Mark, what the, the impact this is going to be. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, again, this, this is a $17 million piece of an overall $45 million program um, to address the needs over the next 30 years, with construction spanning from 2000 to 2007, um, with the project's beginning. So, but to focus on the $17 million issue that we'll be voting on uh, this November. Uh, Swan Pond School, uh, which would be financed over 25 years, 2002 up through 2006, uh, starts out at a rate, a tax rate impact of 20 cents for $1,000 of valuation. Or uh, to a $200,000 home, that's $39.90 per year, $33.33 a month. A $300,000 home that would be upwards of $60 a year, $5 a month. The peak year during that cycle is 2006 with a tax rate impact of $0.60 cents per thousand valuations. So that would mean to a $200,000 value home, $119.70 per year or a little bit less than $10 per month. To a $300,000 home, that's $180 per year, $14.96 a month. And that's at the peak? That's at the peak that's year the peak. of 2007. And it's the plateau and drop off. We, pla we, we drop off from 2007 to 2023, from $0.49 cents to $0.02 cents per thousand. The last three years, 2023 to 2026, are actually credit years because we're getting the tapered off effects of the reimbursement. But that also doesn't address the fact that certain other projects during that time are coming off. Right. So while there is a new That's cost, there's some off This is just the school. This is right? just the school. I'll address those issues in, in, a, in a second. Um, so, so that's the school. The police station, again, mm -hmm. is a 20-year project, 2002-2021. Starts out at its peak because there is no reimbursement. Therefore, our peak is $0.45 cents per thousand or $89.75 on a $200,000 home per year. That's $7.50 per month. $300,000 home, you're looking at $134.63 per year, $11.22 a month, $0.37 cents a day. We're talking for that. That's at its peak year. 2006, which is the peak year for the school, this is still being funded, we have a $0.40 cent impact on the tax rate for $79.96 impact per year to a $200,000 home. Uh, $300,000 home would be $120 a year, $10 a month for the school. The other part that we'll be voting on now are the plans. The overall cost of $450,000. This is only going to be financed for five years. Starts in 2001, starts out at $0.10 cents on the tax rate. $19 per year, $1.58 a month to a $200,000 home. $300,000 home is $28.52 a year. In its last year, 2005, we're at $0.08, cents, so it goes from two, $0.10 cents to $0.08. Cents. You're looking at a $200,000 assessed value home of $50.50, a $300,000 home at $23.20. In that year, 2005, the overall impact of this particular proposal that we're voting on, the 17 million, is $1.09 
on your tax rate, dollar nine per thousand. For a two hundred thousand dollar home, you're looking at an additional increase of two hundred seventeen dollars and sixty one cents a year, eighteen dollars thirteen cents a month, sixty cents a day. 